Hello class, uh, today we're going to be looking at chapter 5, section 1, um, homeostasis in a cell and how does the cell maintain homeostasis. So we're going to be looking at the cell membrane for most of chapter 5 and our two questions here today are how does the cell membrane help the cell maintain homeostasis and if we can't remember what homeostasis is, just a reminder, it is the ability to maintain a stable internal environment. And then question two, explain the kinetic theory of motion as it relates to particles moving inside and around a cell. So to start our notes today, we'll be looking at homeostasis. And then we're going to look at just the basics of why particles are in motion or how that functions and how that's important to a cell. So first we're looking at the word homeostasis again and homeostasis just means a stable internal environment if you don't know that by now you need to learn it so that definition um, came from chapter one and you need to make sure that you know it as we go through this entire um, semester so how do cell membranes help maintain homeostasis they control what goes into and out of the cell and we're going to get into how that functions in the next couple days of notes, so passive transport and active transport. Um, but the key part about homeostasis is that it's controlling uh, what is allowed in and what is allowed out of the cell. Now, kinetic energy and transport. When we look at kinetic energy, hopefully that makes you think of motion. Kinetic is motion. So this is energy in motion. And if you remember back to physical science, for those of you that have had it, or maybe just back to 7th or 8th grade science, um, kinetic energy is when particles are in motion. So when we look at particles, any particle in nature in uh, the universe. It is in motion. And if we look at our solids, liquids, and gases, solids are particles where that vibrate next to each other. Liquids are particles that slide past each other. Uh, they take up a little bit more space, but they still have a definite volume. And then gases can take the shape of their container. So whatever they happen to be um, given as far as a space, they will take up that entire space. They do not have a definite volume or definite shape. And so the process of kinetic theory and cell transport and things crossing the cell membrane has to do with this particle motion. Since particles are in motion, they are going to be able to transport across a cell membrane. And maybe show you here just a little bit of a drawing kind of of what that would look like. We'll get to this in the next couple um, days of notes. But if we have particles that are in motion, they will continue moving in the direction they are going until they hit a barrier. So these particles like water or sucrose or salt, sodium, potassium, chlorine, things like that, will continue to move until they run into something. And so we have this cell membrane that's made up of fats, a fat layer. And what will happen is particles that are in motion will move through this layer if they are small enough or if they can be dissolved by the fat layer, if they're nonpolar. And so some things will go right through and some will bounce off. Um, depending on their size and shape and whether they're polar or nonpolar. So we'll be getting into this with the passive um, transport and the active transport in the next couple days of notes.